Hi, I'm Tony Williams, and you're once again welcome to Knowing What I Now Know. As always, I like to start the vlog by first of all thanking and acknowledging every single person who have taken it upon themselves in one way or another to give me feedback on my previous posts that I put out there. So those who did it by phone, by email, through my social media platforms that are out there, those who liked it, who shared it, who tweeted it. Um, I want to say a big heartfelt thank you to you guys. Um, all your advice, all your encouragement, they're greatly appreciated. They're literally, as I always say, like fall to my tank to enable me to keep doing what I am doing. Um, it's also uh, good that I know that, you know, what I put out there in one way or another, it is affecting someone or it is, you know, being listened to or, you know, it is challenging someone to make a change for the better. So, yeah, thanks once again. Thank you so much. Don't stop doing what you're doing, you know, because um, that's all I need from you. Thank you very much. Um, it's also a good place to say the way the vlog uh, was designed from the start is for it to be intentional and hopefully you know transformational you know but in the same way take people on the journey of my life and how I came from where I came from to where I am and where I'm actually going um, so most of the posts that I put out there I put them out there in sequence of how I think it's important uh, that or how I think the steps that people should take to make a change and the sort of inner searching and preparation that they need to do you know in their mind how I think it's important for enable them to make that change and not keep on backsliding or you know keep on uh, going one step forward and two step backwards so most of the videos I put out there they're in a way they're in sequence you know of how each step is effective to a lasting change in everybody's life who decides to walk this journey so having said that um, if there are any videos that you might have missed or if this is so to say just the first time you've seen me or on your screen or the first time that you're watching the video it would be a good idea if this you know is of any interest to you to look at the backlog of videos that I've done uh, through my YouTube channel, on my website, um, through my social media platforms, um, and sort of, you know, follow them up. Because what that does is that, you know, it brings you on, on this journey, you know, it's never too late to join the train. You know, it brings you on this journey, shows you where I'm coming from, you know, and things that I, I think, you know, if you find interesting, you could apply to your life if you are willing to make any form of change or if you're in a place where you, you know, feel a lot of despair. So, yeah, those videos will help you, will bring you up to date to where we are today. And obviously, if you do continue to, you know, follow follow the sequences of, of vlogs that I put out, then hopefully it will take us from a good place to a great place. So, yeah, the best way to do that is really to subscribe, isn't it? Because if you do subscribe, you know, perhaps to any of my social media channels, so the subscription would be for sort of YouTube, uh, a like would be for sort of Facebook, um, a share, uh, 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 sign up to the newsletter would be on my website, you know, and sort of follow on Twitter and, and, and whatever uh, social media platform that I use that I put out there. So basically, what it does is that it gives you prompts whenever you know I do upload the videos. I always say I try and upload these videos every Friday, but you know, circumstances do you know change situations sometimes and I'm not able to do it Friday but I will do it at a later date so having said that rather than you just waiting or searching for the video the next video that has been recently uploaded if you are you know, sort of subscribed to any of those channels or social medias then you get a prompt straight away um, on your phone or through your email of any new material that I put out there so yeah please subscribe you know um, I think it's important that we, you know if we're on this journey, you know, we walk hand in hand, as they say, iron sharpens iron, you know, um, and the kind of people you hang around is the kind of people that you end up being like. So yeah, once that's done, you know, then uh, we'll be in a better, we'll be in a good place to start walking along this journey with each other. So having said that, let's dive right into it. Pew. So today, I want to talk about the power of our thoughts 
Um, so much is being said by people about the power of our thoughts, um, but hopefully I want to go one foot further today and, you know, so these are just subjective. They're not by any way um, uh, what I would say, you know, it's, it's definitely how it has to work. But these are my opinion about opinions about how the power of our thoughts, how it could affect our character, it could affect our purpose in life, it could affect our physical well-being, it could factor into us achieving much or achieving less in life, you know, it could even affect our entire orientation and ultimately just keep us bound in a box of limitation which is obviously not what anybody wants for our life or for our loved ones so yes these all start from the power of our thoughts you know and that's what hopefully i want to address today or i want to share some views on um so hopefully um you find this you know uh, challenging and it's something you might be able to reflect on you know, on the long run uh, search yourself and search you know the, the garden field of your mind on how you use that powerful tool that's been given to us you know to make the best out of our life do you know it's so often said that as a man thinks so is he you know i would agree with that yes as a man thinks so he so is he but one thing that's never said which should always be added to the end of that is not only that uh, as a man thinks so is he you know the end of that should be as a man continues to think so he will remain you know so as a man thinks in his heart so is he that's that's understandable but you, so is he up to that stage but that man is still living so as you continue to think so you would remain so if you decide to start, you know, nurturing positive thoughts in your life or in your garden field of your mind, you know, you could probably hit the highest of the high. If you continue to nurture bad, negative thoughts, bad thoughts, you know, you could be at the lowest of the lows. You could be in a place of depression. You could be in any, you know, bad state that, uh, Oh, that puts you in a downcast mode regularly it's all in the power of our mind you know our thoughts in a way they affect our character and our character literally affects our actions and our actions is what people in the general public use to define us used to accept us used to out, out uh, cast us away or used to you know embrace us you know and and someone might say how does our thoughts affect our character so basically what it is is our thoughts are like a garden field uh, sorry our mind is like a garden field you know a character is our outward uh, um our character is our outward uh, presentation of what our thoughts are thinking about so what our thoughts would send you know which is in, in us would send signal on how we move our entire being or our thoughts would be the one that will send signals of how we open our mouth or our thoughts would be the one who sends signals to how who we relate to or you know who we think is nice who we think is angry who we think we want to associate with who we you know without no thoughts none of those actions would happen from us so and unless that character you know is presented in sort of a public place i always say through the actions that we take or through the way that we speak you know nobody would ever be able to define us you know if you meet someone for the very first time and you are the worst person ever but you've met this person for the very first time if you sit down 
and just fold your hand and that person talks and everyone talks and you just sit down and, and you know you're in a good mood but you're the worst person inside ever if you sit down throughout that whole conversation and just nod your head and uh, you know that person would never be able to say oh this guy is of this nature or this girl is of that nature or so he would not be able to define your character at best he would go away and say wow that person he, you know I, I couldn't understand him he's really quiet he didn't say nothing or you know uh, he, he's a little bit you know uh, I can't I can't figure out what exactly you know is going through it's because you haven't said nothing you see the minute the thoughts in our mind begin to send stimuli to, to stimuli to our character and our character begins to exhibit all the thoughts that are running through you know the garden field of our mind and and being exhibited it, it, through our body or through our you know outwardly through our body then through actions then everyone who's around us would be able to see you know oh this guy is of this nature this girl is of this nature this guy he's a he's a dupe the, you know this guy is a thief you know this guy is a he's a he's a successful guy he's a, you know they, they'll be able to only say true you know because if as i said when you just sit down and you don't do nothing nobody's ever able to to define you nobody's able ever able to label you nobody's ever only true the actions that you've done and those actions they could only be be defined again in a public place you know in an environment because if you do that in your house or you're just in your house you lock your doors and you do all of that there's nobody who's going to be able to say oh you're this person you're that person or you know you're 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 whatever it's then it's only when your character now starts showing these things to all different sorts of actions and stuff like that that you you know people now you know on an outward place i should say that's when people now start thinking okay he's he's like that and i think i've said that you know already before so that's how our thoughts affect our character but you know those thoughts they land on our mind and that our mind we're in control of it you know our mind is as i said it's like a garden field it's 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 very fertile so thoughts will drop into our mind you know and we we as men and women we are the controller of that garden field you know our mind is not in nobody's head our mind is, is situated in between our you know our, our, our skull you know our brain if that's the right place for it. you know our mind is situated in there and we and we alone control it now don't get me wrong someone might come and try and um, radicalize, or someone might try and uh, put words into your head, and you know, sway your thought, or your thoughts, or your level of thinking. But again, the choice to bend over, or to listen, or to be swayed, or to be won over by whatever is an external factor, is still depends on you no nobody no nobody could physically you know unless on the duress you know and, and that's why even that they don't say that is not allowed you know because they expect you as a human being to make that choice you that is one liberty that our creator has given us to be able to take control of and by by you know nobody else's assistance apart from our own so our, our mind is is like that garden field and the thing is whether in a garden whether you 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 water the field or you plant something in the field or you don't plant something in the field things would just begin to grow up anyway after a while if it's left bare so if you go to any garden if it's left bare and you know the gardener's not planting things in there you know after a while things would just you you know things you don't plant just begin to grow up you see thorns you see weed you see all sorts of things you know that just begin to grow up in the in in the garden uh, you know you see little insects and rats just running all up and down but that's exactly how our mind is if you don't choose you know to 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 process you know the right thoughts that drop onto the garden field of your mind because the thoughts are the seed 
that drops in there because nothing else could check it nothing else could physically physically drop in to our mind you know the only thing that could drop into our mind is a thought you know even when we see things with our eyes which is a sight it still has to go through a process of our eyes of our mind telling that what telling what our eyes see as this particular thing so and that particular that sit that process there is a thought so when it's left for us to allow the right thoughts to drop in our head because if we don't process the right thoughts you know if we you know if the right thoughts come in and we just throw it away eventually bad thoughts would replace the right thoughts because we haven't sort of programmed our minds to always focus or we haven't directed our thoughts to always focus on the right thing then when anything else comes in that is you know of no importance of no insignificance we're subject to to you know lean towards it you know that's where you know somewhere in the scriptures it says guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life you know even though it says the heart but check it the heart cannot think on its own the heart is a blood pumping machine you know so, so literally it's saying guard your mind you know because the things that drop in your mind it will affect your heart it will make you whole and healthy you know it will make your heart function properly in, in 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 a way and you'd be surprised you know that's why you know someone could something can affect people in a way through their thoughts and they fall into depression you know or they you know they fall into obesity you know they just start or they fall turn into a drunkard and all of those things eventually through the power of the thoughts that you focused your mind on begins to affect your heart and when your heart is malfunctioning then what it does is exhibits all these form of illnesses and disease that you know we we, we find ourselves you know struggling with in 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 the world today so it's quite important to always guide our mind guide I'm trying to say the word properly to guard our mind with all diligence you know it's it's important because our mind it would affect our character our thoughts that we put in there it you know which is inner it's it's an outward display it's practically an outward display of what we do so our when when people see how we act in public or when people see how we behave in public you know it's not far-fetched that all they have to do is go back to how they think your your mind is working and they'll be able to figure out why you're acting in that way you know as i say your mind would go it, it could attract things that you think about so you know that's why they say whatever the brain could conceive that or whatever the mind could conceive we could achieve so if you intentionally continuously direct your talk your thoughts on one certain thing you would eventually find yourself being able to achieve that thing you know if you consistently and you know continuously direct your mind on a bad thing you'd also be able to to achieve that bad thing you know that's why they say you know a godlike character and a gangster character and a character that's a prostitute and a character that's a you know just a crazy person they don't happen overnight you know it has to be continuously consistent focusing continually consistent dabbling with those thoughts you know it's someone who wants to who wants to become a you know gym member or not a gym member who wants to who wants to pump his weights up for instance he constantly you know knows he has to go to the gym you know it, 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 the outward presentation of his thoughts and that consistency of that thoughts knowing i have to you know constantly go to the gym is what would begin to show in his outward appearance you know and before you know it you find him big but the discipline comes from him narrowing his thoughts in the right way so that his thoughts 
could align you know with his mind and then that mind could send that signal to the body to continue doing it and then that body acts on 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 that on the on the stimuli or the, the signal that you know runs through those channels and it begins to act in that way that's basically how it is so it, you know it, people want to sort of become something people want to change their world but they you know people want the best in life but they don't want to change their world you know they so a, a man wants to be successful but he doesn't want to stop the wrong things that he's doing in order for him to be this successful so he's dabbling with the thoughts you know but he's not directing and he's not making those thoughts focus so in the garden field of his mind you know he's planted the seeds there but thorns and everything are coming up and it doesn't take time from a re on, on a regular basis to come up and weed out those you know thorns and water you know his thoughts and you know so that every time you know his grass is nicely cultivated and at the time when it's due for the harvest he could know that true but true he's he's consistent you know what i mean plowing of that field and watering of those seeds and uprooting the weeds you know that wanted to take his part his his his, his thoughts off you know to the off the right track he now has a harvest of what would show on an outward outward appearance of his body through his action or through you know any success you know and, and that's basically how it is so i i always say like it's so important that our thoughts we should channel it we should we should channel it properly e extremely properly we should narrow it down you know we should not let doubt and failure and fear uh, you, you know it, it, it's hard but we because we are the master of our thoughts nobody else and no external circumstances if we only begin to position our minds in that kind of way we will always find out that every time those things arise we through the power of those thoughts we'll be able to override it and we'll be able to get ourselves to that greater place and our character would also reflect it how does our thought how does it affect our purpose now I could easily say, and I'm sure a lot of people could agree with me, that there has been no accomplishment that we could conceive of as, as human beings up on to date, or, you know, before we were born, or, you know, that's probably going to last us when we die, that hasn't come by through someone's thoughts. So, nothing that's been created on this earth that we live in has been accomplished in one way or another but by someone's thoughts. So, someone or some people sat down in one place, they thought in their mind, they dreamed it and said, look, this is what we want to do, you know, and eventually you know true consistency or to whichever way they've done it they got they got it done so those are the two you know sorts of you know uh distances but in between that is what i call a purpose because although nothing was as accomplished or, or although nothing has been that although nothing that is has been accomplished without a thought, nothing that is could never have been accomplished without a purpose. Because the thought doesn't go to accomplishment straight away. The thought of our mind, it locks on, it keys on to a plan or a purpose. When it keys on to a plan or a purpose, that's what allows that thought to override failure override doubts override uh, uh, bickering override procrastination override any kind of thing that would make that 
right straight way crooked anything that would become an obstacle anything that would lay them down and turn them into a failure it's that key or that lock that that thought in your head has locked itself up or, 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 or locked around onto a purpose that allows it to make come into accomplishment because when you have a clear defined purpose you know your thoughts in the garden field of your mind would lay the seed in there and then you say look this seed is i want it to be if we're talking in gardens now i want this seed to become a mango tree or you know let's not say that that's even the i want this seed of yam i don't know if anybody grew yam before i used to grow yam so i know this i want this seed of yam this this head of yam that we plant it's never a seed but it was the head of the yam i was very young so i don't even know what it was called but you cut the head of the yam and you put it in the soil and you you know you put a heap of sand over it and then you put a stick in it so that when the uh, leaves start to grow, it sort of curls it its way around it. Well, you know, the ultimate thing is that you want that thought, which is your seed, you want it to become something. And right there and then, the minute we put that yam inside the ground, we know or we start to have an image of what the yam will look like going down into the ground. You know, and that is why, you know, every time after school, we will go and look at it. Oh, as the leaf started turning brown, is the leaf rolling around the stick properly? You know, has one uh, goat come and chop the leaf off? You know, we try and build a hedge around it so that, you know, if any, and, and that's just basically how it is. And even what, what sometimes we would have come we would get to where you know we've planted the yam and the stick would have fallen down and we'll come or someone would have come and stolen the stick and we'll go and look for another stick we'll put it back in there you know that's just basically that's the same analogy with a thought with a purpose in the human life you know when when you your, your thoughts come your purpose is what keeps you on track you know your purpose is what keeps you on track and to get to that purpose you would experience failure you would experience despair you would experience discouragement you would have people say it can never work you would have people say but because your thought is your thought is so set is set and you're looking at the end goal you're looking at the end result you know it's not ironic that einstein you know uh, or, or and all these kind of people they 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 failed several times, but you know they kept their they, they kept their eye on the goal. If they didn't have a clear, defined goal of what you know they wanted to do at that particular time, they would never be able to make it. And that's just basically how we are. If we didn't have if we don't have a clear goal, we'll never be able to make it. It's only when we have that clear goal defined, you know. So our thought has, you know, from. It, it landed on the field of our mind it's 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 had you've had the picture of what you want to paint or, or what you want the outcome to be and then you just start working towards it and you know even when the storm comes and knocks you to the left or when you know this one comes and knocks you to the right or, you know you just say you know what but i have the picture in. and that's why you know for some people who know vision birds people encourage a lot of vision birds i agree with it totally because it locks you onto a vision and I'll tell you a story. Like when, when you know, a few years ago, I, I, I took um, I, I when I used to be in Nigeria, and I will used to say to myself, "Look, I'm gonna decorate my house." So I would, you know, every time I was flying from London, I would say to myself, "Ah, oh, you know what? Today I'm gonna do the room." Or, you know, and then the next time when I come in, I'm going to do the front room. And the next time when I come in, I'm going to do the, the bedroom. And the next time I'm going to do the AC. And the next time. And I had, like, um, goals that I set for myself. Although they were not clear goals. But, I, I you know, I did say every time I flew in, I'm going to decorate part of the house. But what would happen? I would go in. Boom. And I, one time I would do one room and um, 
I'll probably have to put, you know, I'll, I'll do up the room, no problem. And then it probably might come to a place just to complete the room. I might say, ah, oh, do you know what? This room, it needs one AC. I'm going to put an AC in it. But then I'll go to the shop and the, the price for the AC would be sort of 85K. This is years ago when I got my house. So I was like, ah, 85K? Nah, that's too expensive. Uh, and then I'd go away and I'll keep the 85K in my pocket. And then at night time, uh, a couple of my friends would call me and say, T, yeah, let's let's just go and have a good time or something. And we would go out. We'd go out to a club on the island or, or, or whatever. And, you know, when we get carried away, we'll spend like 250K or, you know, 300K or whatever. We'll just spend some ridiculous amount of money. And then I'd come home back, you know, and I'd have to sleep in the heat. And I'd be thinking to myself, but you know what? I could have and I could have bought that AC for 85K and put it in there and you know enjoy my sleep at night but no you know because it wasn't defined because i didn't think you know it was important at that time i'd go out to the club i'll spend it on silly drinks that will piss away that i'll drink probably two glasses and hold a glass for the rest of the night just feeling cool and you know but nothing's been achieved i've wasted that money away and that if if, if i do the match right that 85k would have put acs in sorry that 300k or 250k um that I spent would have put three ACs in, in, in the house, not just it, one in my room that I refused to buy. And that's just how it is. When we don't have a clear defined, when we don't have a clear defined goal, that's that's the depth of of aimlessness and and you know foolishness that we will find ourselves you know, um, walking around with. And this applies to all facets of life. It's so important that we, you know we, we from our thoughts when it lands on that field we allow it to create a purpose a plan you know that, that plan you know we're, we're clear about it we define it we know that this is what it is we're not going to allow waves to, to you know move us to the left or to the right with failure we're just going to package it and know that is a, is a better way of doing you know failure is literally just uh, another way of not of knowing how it's not going to work so we're not going to waste our time doing things that we did that made us fail and that's just basically how it is and in that way we'll find ourselves get into our purpose you know touching it accomplishing it impacting people and lives by it and then our thoughts land again and it's moved on to a next place you know and then by the time it moves on to a next place you know we've left that behind it's like it never happened you know and that's what entrepreneurs do. That's what people who, who you know, who are successful do. You know, they, 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 they understand life is not a destination. They, you know, they're always challenged. Their mind is always challenged. You know, if you read one book, he says, oh, look, I want to read 10 books. If you read 10 books, he says, look, I need to read another 100 books. You know, if he starts one business, he thinks, you know what, I'm not finding satisfaction from this. He wants to start another one. And then he wants to start another one. You know, that's, that's what it is. He's been investing. He buys one house. He thinks, you know, that's not good enough. I want to buy another house. And then he gets to the, you know, he gets there and thinks, you know, this is not good enough. I want to buy another house. And then you find him, you find that he's at a place or she's at a place where, you know, his money's just turning back and working with him. And, you know there's never anything in his life that seems like retirement because he's sitting down you know at his comfort zone and he's just doing all these things and it's just coming at ease but it all stems by his thoughts locking onto a purpose and when that purpose is met he's moving on to another one he's making impact to there and he's moving on to another one how does our thought how does it affect our circumstance which is the final one you know our thoughts as i say it affects our circumstances, well, I haven't said it, but our thoughts does affect our circumstance. You know, a circumstance is us saying everything else out there apart from us is the cause of our failure. No, we've been given a power of choice we were told to use our thoughts and the power of our thoughts to make the right choice. No matter how bad things seem to get, everybody always has an opportunity to make a right choice. Whether they make that right choice at that time is a totally different case. So if we don't make the right choice, at the time where 
we're meant to make it, then we can't blame anybody else for how the situation turns out that we find ourselves. And that's our circumstance. You know, so really, our circumstance, when it does come, it does it it it, it's, it, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't sort of challenge us or it doesn't say oh our circumstance uh it doesn't it, it's not the one who's making us wh what we are or it's not the one who's created the environment that we're living in our circumstance is literally just revealing our true self to us you know our circumstance is just saying look this is a circumstance i find myself because or this is the circumstance you find yourself because this is the way you thought your life out. There's nothing to it. There's nothing else to it. Because if our thoughts are right, then our circumstances would end up in the right place. Or, you know, we would end up in the right place. Because our thoughts, our circumstance is also our environment. You know, our circumstance is the money we have in our pocket, is, you know, us being successful, us being, you know, and all that stems from how we think. If we're not thinking right, those things are, you know, life, as they say, it just doesn't favour people. I always say you can never walk down the road and just find five pounds. No, that's how hard life is. But we really don't have to make it hard. Because they're rules, they're rules of beings. The, the whole universe is governed by laws. And we cannot succeed in the universe, which is what we've tried to do in the past, without understanding the rules. You can't go into any game. You can't go into a football game and not understand the offside rule. Offside rule. Or not understand throwing an elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you can't and so is American football so is boxing you can't keep hitting people under the belt you know you can't you, you, you can't do none of that you have to understand the rules it's just so ironic that people just drop on planet earth and just want to live a life k sera sera and just think yeah it's our circumstance has to favor us it's not going to favor us it's the law as I said of course and effect so cause you whatever you do you know you get the you find the effect if you act right you get the right effect of it if you act badly you get the right effect of it that's just basically how it is you know so our circumstances is not going to change us it's not going to tell us, you know, uh, uh, or it's not going to change overnight. It's not. It, it's going to wait till we change our thoughts, we change our mind. That change activates a domino effect against all odds, and then our circumstance will begin to rotate. Our soul attracts, you know, our own liking. You know, when we're born, we're all born with a soul. That soul is the subconscious part of us. That soul never gets seen by no one. You know, the closest you see a soul is when you die. They say, ah, we see something traveling out through the camera. I'm sure people have seen that before. Now, we took a picture and we saw the soul just, or the spirit, you know, but the soul, that's it. So that soul is what works with our thoughts. And that soul, trust me, is not a policeman where you say he's racist or a policeman where you say he's prejudiced. That soul, it acts on how you send it. So check it. When you send, when you begin to process thoughts continuously, 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 out of school, that like, you know what? I want to be a runs girl. You know what would happen? You just begin to find people who are runs girls all around you. St standard. You don't say, ah, I want to be a runs girl, I want to be a runs girl, and then you begin to find doctors and lawyers and nurses. No, you the minute you begin to consistently focus on it, that's what you find. You find runs girls. You say you want to be a front star, standardly. You know what? The good thing is, if you say you to yourself, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, you and you consistently focus on that, you know, your soul will go out and start creating an environment 
for your spirit, your physical body to start finding those kind of things. But when you look at it, when you when you stretch it all back to one, it begins with that power of our thought. You know, I'm running out of time on this. There's so much to say. I've still got about four or five other uh, points that I would love to share. But, you know, so that the video doesn't get so long, I, I think I'm going to put an end to it at this place. But I hope this blesses someone. And I said, this is just, it, it, it's what I feel, you know, could cause transformation. And when we do understand these laws and these principles and how the, our mind works and how we can use our mind to affect our life, over a period of time i could guarantee you you know you would find a change that would make your life unrecognizable to the people who are all around you think about it reflect about it share with me what your thoughts and your ideas are always you know comment feed give me a feedback subscribe do whatever you want to do to you know engage with the post and um or however you can engage with do engage with the post however you can and hopefully when i do come back next week i will do the end of the power of our thoughts thanks again for watching until i speak to you again good night and god bless